the world of calisthenics, there are many exercises to choose from. Some amazing, others not so much. That's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the exercises I decided to stop doing permanently and why that is. Subscribe and like, let's go ahead and get right into it. The first exercise I've stopped doing is the one arm pull up negative. Now the one arm pull up negative is great for learning the one arm pull up. And the reason is, is because like a lot of exercises, you're gonna be a lot stronger within the eccentric part of the movement. So in regards to the one arm pull up, that exercise is taught a lot. But the reason why I've stopped doing it is because I got a crazy elbow tendonitis or golfer's elbow, whatever you wanna call it, after doing it for a few weeks, which actually set me back in my training. That is why I believe there are much better alternatives to learn the one-arm pull-up. Some included the band-assisted one-arm pull-up, which really is how I learned the one-arm pull-up, and then also archer pull-ups. So anything revolving around a unilateral eccentric movement, I just overall tend to avoid just due to the high impact of injury and just overall my bad experiences. However, with the calisthenics, the number one thing I've learned too is that there are a thousand ways to skin a cat. Some people learn with bands, some people learn with progressions, some people learn with eccentrics, and some people learn without doing anything. They just get a carryover sort of strength effect, much like how I learned the human flag, right? So with that being said, one arm pull-up negatives, I'm not doing, I literally haven't done those since I think literally 2016 and I can still do multiple reps of a one-arm pull-up. So this next movement is pretty surprising and a lot of you guys aren't gonna believe me, but I've actually stopped doing weighted dips for now nearly a year and a half. And the reason is, is because one day I went in the gym, I was doing some weighted dips, going heavy per usual, as I've been doing for multiple years on end. I had like two or three plates, something like that, going low reps. And then after I got off and I started doing my next movement, I felt this weird pain within my chest, sternum pain. And it got so bad to the point where I couldn't bend over, I couldn't do any pull-ups, I couldn't do any pushing exercises. And I went back home, I started searching, I was like, what is this in my chest? And lo and behold, what I came to find out is that I had a costochondritis. What that means is inflammation of the cartilage in the sternum or rib cage, and that was brought upon me through heavy weighted dips. Now, let me mention, I forgot to mention this, I still like dips, I still do dips here and there, but more a high rep, the thing is I don't do heavy weighted dips anymore. That's the thing where I'm getting at. And I've asked around multiple calisthenics athletes and the common trend I tend to realize is that weighted dips inevitably usually bring some sort of injury to somebody or some sort of setback. So with that being said, I recommend for you guys, if you're training really, really heavy weighted dips, is to just be careful, make sure your form is on point, make sure you're not doing anything that can provide a risk of injury and or just do normal dips with light weight or maybe even moderate weight at least being able to do between 10 and 15 reps and not going super heavy or crazy like I was doing aiming for a three or five rep range with weighted dips so in order to make up for that what I started doing instead is the body weight dip machine I started doing just normal dips so a high reps as I said before and I started doing more tricep push downs because I was thinking to myself logically, what does a weighted dip actually work? Primarily works the your triceps, or just every part of your tricep, and then also your lower chest. For my workout routine, I do a lot of planche movements. So my lower chest is already getting enough volume, and plus my lower chest is pretty hefty, right? So I don't need any more lower chest muscle mass right there anyway. And then two, my triceps are actually pretty decent. So I was able to compensate for that volume by doing other movements, such as planche push-ups, handstand push-ups, and then combine that with a tricep isolation exercise. It's actually one of the foundational movements of my Limitless Athlete program, where I combine calisthenics and weightlifting. And like I said, I've been doing that for now a year and a half. So if you wanna learn how you can also mix calisthenics and weightlifting to provide the benefits of both relative strength and absolute strength alongside with building an aesthetic body, then go ahead and check out my Limitless Athlete program. It's on a deal right now, so I'll leave a link down below the description. Now this next one is more of a personal thing, and I'm not sure about you guys, but whenever I worked out, this started in 2018, I started getting really, really bad cramps. After every muscle group I work out, if I go move the muscle group afterwards, I just get really bad cramps. Now, one of the worst cramps I've ever experienced was in my abs, and it was through this one exercise, the rope cable crunch. I will literally never do a rope cable crunch again just because the amount of excruciating pain I've experienced through getting a cramp while doing that movement. Now, like I said, everybody's not gonna experience cramps to the degree I've experienced them in, but for some reason, this rope cable crunch just triggers a literal ab cramp that feels like somebody's stabbing me in my stomach 
And because of that, I would never do it again. So in order to combat some cramping stuff that I realized is that I started supplementing zinc, vitamin D, potassium, and this one pill that kind of has all of it all together. I take that before I work out every single day or every time I go to the gym. Then alongside with that, I started doing ab exercises that didn't bring me cramps and that had mutual carryover benefit. And the ab exercise I realized for me at least was hanging leg raises or even weighted hanging leg raises. I, for the most part in regards to training my abs, only do hanging leg raises. The correlation between learning the LSID, my hip flexors, lower abs, just overall ab development, I found this to be the best movement for me. If you want a more weighted movement, then what I also like is decline weighted sit-ups. I love those. But the rope cable crunch, I am never doing again. I, I felt like I was about to die in the gym. I had to stop my workout. I had to lay still and not move what I was doing. People probably thought you didn't, they didn't know what was going on. But I would never do it again. And then alongside with that, overall in this whole video, those are exercises that I'll probably never do again. And you just learn that through trial and error. The same exercises that I'm not doing, you might love these same exercises and you might not do the ones that I love doing because they might bring injury or something to you. That's why you gotta learn and experience what you like and what you don't like. And that's what makes a good workout routine. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out Limitless Athlete. Link will be down below. Watch this video next. I'm gonna see you on the next one. Peace.